It was the Monday after the 2009 Super Bowl. I remember very distinctly, I was in middle school eating lunch in the cafeteria with my friends. There was another guy at the table that I was arguing regarding the final play of the game. This was a very controversial play because it determined the winner, and I was arguing that the Pittsburgh Steelers indeed caught a touchdown pass, making them the champions. After a while, the guy saw that I wasn't giving up on my argument, and I remember very clearly he looked away and he said, whatever, you're just a girl. You don't understand sports anyway. And I remember being so taken aback. I didn't even know how to respond to this comment. I couldn't understand how my gender could possibly interfere with my capability of understanding sports. As I grew up, I realized that this wasn't an uncommon assumption that people believed. I've never felt like I was different or special because I was a woman who enjoyed playing sports. It's just always been something that I love. It wasn't until I reached around middle school and high school that I began to feel like I had to prove myself not only on the field or the court, but also to the people around me, especially the guys. I also found out that it was uncommon for female-driven sports to get a lot of coverage, whether that was at my own games or professionally. I was often told that male-driven sports were more popular because they were more exciting and men could actually play sports. So what, just because I'm a woman that automatically disqualifies me from having athletic abilities? For some reason, women have to choose between being athletic and feminine, as if these two qualities couldn't come together to make up one person. But no matter how many times I've been told that I shouldn't play physical sports or that I'm incapable of understanding how a game works, I will never let these gender roles and stereotypes take me away from something that I love. Since I can remember, I have enjoyed playing and watching a variety of different sports, but soccer will always be my first love. It's the first sport I played, and it's my favorite sport to watch. So who's my favorite team? Well, it's none other than the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. These women are fierce, hardworking, and the best in the world. Since the commencement of the FIFA Women's World Cup in 1991, the U.S. National Team has won three out of the seven tournaments, making them the most decorated women's national team in the world. Since then, they have been paving the road for future generations of female soccer players. After the win at the 1999 World Cup, soccer skyrocketed within the U.S. According to the U.S. Youth Soccer Organization, 30 years ago they had about 100,000 members, but now over 3 million young players belong to the organization. Over the past decade and a half, the U.S. has seen a dramatic growth in youth soccer, especially among young girls who have watched and admired the U.S. women's soccer team. I had the opportunity to see this impact in person. Back in October of 2015, I met one of my favorite players from the national team, Lauren Holiday. And get this, I met her on the same exact fields that I used to play on. She spoke about her 2015 World Cup win and shared soccer drills to inspire young athletes and fans. It was incredible to see the hundreds of young girls that showed up to participate in this event and how excited they were to show off their soccer skills. So for this project, I initially had plans to create a documentary that would highlight the impact the U.S. women had on other female athletes and fans. But a simple Google search to see what already existed led me to see that there was something much deeper. I realized that female fans were not immune to the stereotypes that are often placed on female athletes. I decided then to set out and find other female players and fans who love this game as much as I do. I wanted to hear about their experiences with these gender roles and stereotypes and see if it had affected their outlook on the game. I wanted to give them a voice and allow them the opportunity to represent the side of women's soccer that is not properly represented online. Here are their stories. I'm Amelia Cagle and I've played soccer since I'm four years old. I'm Summer Sorensen. I've been playing since I was three. I started when I was like three and now I'm not. Hey, I'm Abby Sprague. I have been playing since I was three, so 11 years. My name is Hannah Plate, and I played since second grade. Oh, I was like 10, I think, 10 or 11. Yeah, yeah since 10. I've been playing since I was 15. Hi, my name is Megan McGavro. I'm a senior. I just finished up my last season with the UT Dallas women's soccer team. I have been playing soccer since I was eight years old. I did start very young. Um, we moved to Keller when I was Four, and we started that year, so that was like first year of kindergarten. We usually play rough teams and we kind of like get to play tough. You have to take a different approach, you know, teams get faster, stronger, bigger, so as you get older it's a lot more physical, which for me is fun because, you know, you might think that only guys are 
you know push each other and not but that's really not how it is and then you get to like push people around and I'm <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I that's just, like what makes it fun. My favorite parts are definitely scoring. I've always been a forward since I think I was like 12. So that's just the most special part is just going to the goal and then having the goal celebration, <laughs> honestly. I think initially it was, I had a great group of friends. When I did have to change teams, it ended up that it wasn't my friends who kept me playing soccer, but the love for the sport and being able to work together to to score a goal, to reach some goal. Usually, I'm very shy, I'm not forward. It's hard for me to be in that system, but on the field, I knew where my position was. I knew what I was doing. And so it was my social connection to other girls who were my age. Well, when I say I play college soccer, especially they think automatically I'm some superstar. UT Dallas is actually a Division Three soccer program, which is we don't get athletic scholarships, we get only academic scholarships, which is what everyone else can get here. So it's more about playing for the love of the game. We're not tied down by anything. So when they hear that, then I think their mindset changes is like, oh, are you playing like on a club team or something? Mm -hmm. So it can kind of twist and turn the responses, but I think people see that that's a pretty hard thing to do. So balance your time with that. They either surprise, I guess. Girls. Yeah. Girls. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever feel like you have to like prove yourself? Like, oh, yeah. like, a lot. Like you have to name like the entire roster since the yeah. beginning of time. Yeah. Everyone, including yeah. the kids, the, the ones who play. Yeah. Like, you don't know that, then you're not a fan. Right. right. If you're a fan and someone new comes in or you think they're new, you have to like test them out or something like that. But then also it's mostly stereotypical of of other people to ask girls like, oh, if you're an actual fan, you should know this since you're a girl. The high school's a little more materialistic, a little more judgmental, just, I don't know, high school students are kind of like that in general, so it just seems to transition on the field too. And you could probably even notice that in other sports, just like in softball, everybody's gotta wear ribbons, you know, but they don't have to do that. They just do that because that's what they do, you know? So I think it's just, feeling more pressure to match an image on the field. I think I noticed a lot of people cared more about trying to balance that feminine side, but also being an athlete. You can look too muscular or to this or to that because then you don't look like a girl. But you want to prove because you're a girl, you can do it too. It's the same sport. It doesn't matter what gender you are. You still, you know, we all still, <laughs> we all still play the same game. and. Are aggressive and use skill and all that stuff. It doesn't really affect me how I play. Like I still want to play. For me, when I'm out on the field, I'm not thinking about what other people think. I'm just thinking about my team and how we're going to win this game. How we're going to work together. It's it's not about what the fans think. Oh, did I look good when I scored that goal? Like a lot of my friends started dropping soccer and started going into I guess I want to be more girly side or soccer is an appropriate sport for girls so I'm gonna drop it. I know today a lot of times I feel like television and um, media are pushing that image and I don't know like with my friends if that was what influenced them but I do believe that that's a big role everywhere that media is playing. So at this point it was quite evident that these young women were aware of the kinds of stereotypes that came with being a female athlete. But like I was hoping, it had yet to take away from their love of the game. I was now eager to see if they would be just as shocked as I was to see the results that generated from a simple Google search regarding female soccer fans. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to read them? Yeah. Alright. Wow. Oh, the last one's nice. Alright. Are crazy. Are annoying. Are the worst. Are idiots. Are the best. I like the last one. Yeah. I agree with crazy, but like the other ones, like worse and annoying. I feel like people can be annoying sometimes, like just like talking about whose team's better and like. But they anyone really can. Angry. It's not just females. Yeah. And that's it's obviously probably not a girl that's putting that information in there. I feel like guys can be just as like crazy or annoying. Well, you know, the idiots one doesn't surprise me because. 
women are so ignorant about sports, so that doesn't surprise me. I would think they'd think more highly of women's soccer fans because more of us play that. I don't think it's fair that we're being, we're like getting put out on the internet like that because none of that is true, so. Oh, that's <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like the sexiest fans again. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, yeah, I'm just okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I can't believe yeah. that. I, I don't even see like a normal one. Woohoo, those fun pictures. Yeah, those fans. Those are great fans. They're just oh, okay. all like skinny models, maybe. I don't know. I don't even know where they're getting that from because that's like not even that. Common. That's that's so not. I've never true seen that. though. Like, I think a true female soccer fans like a little the girl. Game. They're not. <laughs> well, they're not there that's to like, you know show off to guys. But like female soccer fans, more like true ones are just you know there for the game. It's annoying. Yeah. That's, I've never seen anyone like that, like even on TV. Yeah, that's that's no not one. accurate at all. Uh uh. Yeah, I don't see any like normal. I don't think I've seen these kind of women's soccer fans at any of my games, or even at the national games really. This is, I think, a big stereotype. Kind of, this is what I feel like they zoom in a lot on at the World Cup for the men. Like when it's hosted in different countries, they find that one like woman from a foreign country that's dressed all sexy or whatever and they like zoom in on her. But honestly that's with every sport. There, there's going to be this idealized sort of cheerleader aspect of the female fan. A little sad, but that's just media finding their one good picture and not always seeing the everyone in that picture. And Perrin's not wrong, but when looking through the Google image results for female fans of other sports, the representation is a far more accurate depiction of the types of fans that exist. Why are the images of extreme sexualization the only ones to represent female soccer fans on Google? As many of the other women pointed out, these depictions are not fair and do not represent us justly. These were not the kinds of fans I encountered when I had seen the national team play. I've realized that no matter how successful the women's national team may be, and how well they represent other women. This team taught all America's children that playing like a girl means you're a badass. People will always find a way to reduce them to nothing more than their sexuality. It has been done time and time again where the kind of coverage a female athlete receives will be more focused on her sexuality than her athletic abilities. What kind of message is this providing young female athletes? That's why proper coverage and representation of the U.S. women's national team and other female-driven sports is so important. Young women need to see that their hard work and dedication on the field will be recognized just as fairly as their male counterpart. Women's soccer has brought the U.S. three World Cup titles and four gold medals, but they are still trying to prove their worth. Even though 25 million people tuned in to watch them beat Japan in the 2015 World Cup, making it the most watched game in U.S. soccer history, major networks have yet to still broadcast any of their other games on a regular basis. This is not only an issue for the national games, but also for the professional league. For decades, U.S. soccer has tried to maintain a pro league for women's soccer, but their first two attempts failed due to lack of funding. Now their third attempt, the National Women's Soccer League, or the NWSL, is on its fifth season. This is the league that everyone is hoping will survive and put professional women's soccer on the map within the U.S. Just recently, a and &E Network signed a historic deal with the NWSL stating that they will broadcast their games on a weekly basis. And while this is a great step in the right direction, we can't stop here. We can't stop until young girls can grow up to believe that making a professional career out of a sport that they love is not a fantasy, but a reality. When I was little, I wanted to be Mia Hamm. I picked number nine until I hit high school and someone else had it. But I like already thought, you know, this is my dream. Let's go to the national team. Then you hit like 14 and you realize you're not on any other like youth national team. You'll never make it to the national team. 
and then there's no pro league, so you can't go further than college. Little boys can grow up wanting to be Ronaldo and actually think that's possible. And then we're thinking maybe we can get on the national team. That was my goal. I had to jump from zero to 100. I couldn't go to 80 at the pro league or something. And then to get to college, you know, that's a big jump too. But to think even past that, I couldn't do that when I was younger. But now there is a pro league and I think the NWSL, which I thought that might falter after a couple of seasons and it's still lasting and new networks are picking them up to air a few other games, which I wish there would be more, but still exciting. It's good for the future. We didn't have these fans like a few years ago yeah. and now they're getting more recognized than the men's team, which is even better. That also makes you feel like you can do it too. Right. And who do you prefer seeing, the girls or the guys? The girls. The girls. Why? Because I'm a girl. <laughs> when you see them, do you do you feel like you could be them one day, or do you hope to be one of those players on the field? I feel like I can, and I hope. To. All of this for us started when we were little, and we had a dream. And in my opinion, all the women up here on this stage believed in that dream kept believing in that dream, not only from the time that they were 5, 10, 15, but the entire World Cup. And I believe that that is the reason why we won this World Cup, is because none of us ever stopped believing, and neither should you guys.